I don't know who needs to hear this message. But there is nothing like God's payback. All you need to do is sit back, watch, and enjoy God fight for you. Because they're suffering big time. Your enemies is struggling big time because of what they did to you. Do not go back seeking revenge, chosen ones. Because vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. He said it in the word. See, sometimes, chosen ones, when you take matters into your own hands, the situation, it comes out worse. Because guess what? Our ways are not like God's ways. Our thoughts are not like God's thoughts. And you don't want to take matters into your own hands. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to end up behind bars somewhere trying to seek revenge on somebody. You can end up killed, dead and gone, sleeping in your grave because you wanted to go back seeking revenge. But you don't even know what the enemy got plotted and planned by you coming back. The enemy waiting for you to come back seeking revenge. And why you think God says do not go back. Because the devil, he want to kill, steal, and destroy you. The devil, he worked through confusion. The devil is the author of confusion. But guess what? God is the author and, and the finisher of our faith. You got to believe that God really going to fight for you. Understand what I'm getting ready to say. Whatever your enemies did, did to you, whatever, amen, they did to try to hurt you, manipulate you, gaslight you, use you, take from you. Let me tell you something, man. Let them have it. Because some of you guys rather put your trust into Larry H. Parker. That commercial when they talk about, man, call us, we'll fight for you. Let me tell you something. Ain't no lawyer, ain't no doctor, ain't no preacher or teacher going to fight for you like Jesus is going to fight for you. So let me tell you something. Have you tried Jesus? Because let me tell you something. He'll really fight for you. Have you tried Jesus? Because guess what? He will come all the way down from heaven just to execute judgment on their head tenfold. Have you tried Jesus? Because he'll come all the way down from heaven just to rain karma on your enemy's head tenfold. You reap what you sow. You get what you deserve. And what your enemies fail to realize, guess what? Karma, do not skip an address. And you'd be surprised that, guess what? God loves you so much, he will reveal your enemy's struggle through a third-party person. Ain't that something? Your enemies don't even know that you know that they're struggling. Because God be trying to show you that, guess what, man? While you try to go back and seek revenge, while you was looking for payback, God said, there is nothing like my payback. So I'm about to show you through a third party person that your enemies is suffering big time because of what they did to you. And you wonder why your enemies, guess what? The ones that used to have their place, guess what? They homeless now. The one that was driving them fancy cars, guess what? They on the bus now. The one that was up and they thought they had the upper hand on you, guess what? They down, they, they down at they they at the bottom of the barrel right now. They at the bottom of this pit because of what they did to you. And look at you, you in the palace right now. Because you know why? You allow God to fight for you. God said, You ain't got no battles to fight. I will fight all your battles. I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You ain't got to worry about it. if they stole from you, let them have it. If they used you, let them have it. If they drained you of your energy, let them have it. Because God told me to tell you that the comeback is bigger than the setback, baby. Your enemies got to watch you eat. Your enemies got to watch you win. And no, they're not watching you win from their own balcony. They got to watch you win from somebody else's balcony. I will never forget when I was out there living from pillar to pole, sleeping in my car, living in the streets. Well, I'm going to tell you, the streets don't love nobody. 
And this is why you got to put on the whole armor of God when you out there in the streets. You got to put on the whole armor of God when you're going through the struggle. Because I promise you, God will take care of you. God will fight for you. God will come through for you. Let me tell you what happened when I was out there in the streets. And I'm out here searching for a roof over my head. I'm searching for a roof for me and my children's head. See, when you are chosen by God, when you are favored by God, people will use you because guess what? All they see is a dollar sign written on your forehead. Your aura speaks generational wealth. So let me tell you something, chosen ones. You got to learn how to say no without explaining yourself. You got to see that enemy coming from a mile away. You got to realize that guess what? When people lay eyes on you, guess what? All they want is the blessings that God has given you. They know you got favor. They know that you they know that you got the key to prosperity. They know that you out here getting to this money. They know you in your calling. They know it's something different about you. And you'd be surprised. People will really use you and they will really manipulate you and gaslight you for your blessings. You're not even knowing. People will really, hey amen, they will really look at you as a dollar sign written on your forehead. They ain't nothing but an opportunist. They ain't nothing but a user. They will use you for everything that you have. But I'm going to tell you right now, you got to put on the whole arm of God so you can withstand the fiery darts that's coming from the devil. Don't you let nobody use you anymore. Don't you let nobody walk all over you anymore. Don't you let nobody take advantage of you. Take your kindness for weakness anymore. Let me tell you something. There's a real reason why God said, just sit back and watch and enjoy me fight for you real quick. Because your enemies are suffering right now. You're not even knowing, but they're suffering big time. I'm getting ready to show you through a third party that they're really going through it right now. Well, I'm going to tell you, they are living a life of hell because guess what? They wanted you to go through hell. And you finally listen to God's instruction. You say, you know what, God? I'm going to take it to you, Lord, and I'm going to leave it there. You said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And guess what? You never stop praying. You never stop praising his name. You never stop seeking his face. You never stop giving him glory. So God said, guess what? Since you didn't go back seeking revenge on your enemies, guess what? I'm going to avenge you publicly. I'm going to return everything that the devil has taken from you. Let me tell you something, chosen ones. What the devil meant for evil, God will always turn it around for your good. You know why? Because you got a good heart. You had good intentions behind, behind these people. You put your trust in these people and guess what? They failed you. They betrayed you. They backstabbed, they backstabbed you. So God said, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I need you to sit back and watch and enjoy me fight for you. You ain't got to worry about none of these battles, man. Let me tell you something, chosen ones. You got to realize that sometimes when we take matters into our own hands, we got to realize that guess what? Sometimes our thoughts are not like God's thoughts. Our ways are not like God's ways. And this is what makes the situation worse. The enemy wants you to go back seeking revenge on the people that did you wrong. He wants you to go back and fight with people. He wants you to go back and argue with people so he can destroy you. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Could you imagine how blessed you will be when you leave the revenge in God's hands? Your cup is getting ready to run over because guess what? You didn't go back and seek revenge on the people that did you wrong. You ain't doing no tick for tack. You didn't stoop down to the enemy's level. You didn't lower your frequency. You say, you know what? I'm going to stay on this higher frequency because I already know how the devil works. You say, you know what? I'm not going to lower my frequency to stoop down to somebody else's level. That's what the enemy wants. He wants a reaction out of you. He wants you to go back and fight. He wants you to go back and cuss people out. He wants you to go back and try to get revenge so he can destroy you. So he can have a reason, amen, amen, to come back at you foul. Let me tell you something. Leave it up to God and take it to God and guess what? He going to work it out for you. There is nothing like God's payback. You got people arguing over you right now, chosen ones. You got people, I'm talking about, man, they are really arguing over the situation that they did to you. You got people over here, I'm talking about, man, they going through hell and hot water because of what they did to you. But let me tell you, they suffering, they suffering. 
God do not play about you. You went from the bottomless pit to the palace. They went from the palace all the way back to the bottomless pit. I promise you, man. You give what you put out. Whatever you put out into the universe is going to be given back to you. That's why you got to be very careful how you treat people. You got to be very careful, amen, of what you say about people. You got to be very careful, amen, how you kick people when they already down. Because you never know, you might need that same person to build you back up again. You might need that same person, amen, to help you, to lend out a hand, to help you. Be very careful how you treat people, man. And this is why you never underestimate nobody. And they underestimated you chosen ones. They took your kindness for weakness. That's what really happened. This is why the enemies did what they did. Because they see that you were so kind. They see that you were so genuine. So they say, mm, I can get over this brother. I can get over this sister. And they did you dirty. They robbed you out of all the money that you had to your name. Somebody did you wrong. They took all the money from you and, and you and all you did was, guess what? You wanted the best for you. You wanted the best for your children. You wanted the best for your life. You wanted the best for your little immediate family and they betrayed you. They scammed you. They robbed you. They schemed you. They plotted and planted against you. And God said, guess what? They plots and plans will not prevail. God says the gates of hell will not prevail over your destiny. God said, just because your enemies did you wrong, Hey man, guess what? That don't mean that your destiny is over with. That don't mean that your life is over with. That don't mean, hey amen, that your, that your vision is going to be set back. God said, don't worry about it. The more your enemies pull you back, guess what? God said, I'm going to just push you forward like a catapult. I'm going to go bring you back forward. You're getting ready to take off like a skyrocket. God said, don't worry about the people that set you back. Because the comeback is much bigger than the setback. But let me tell you that people are living from pillar to pole because guess what? They knew exactly what they did to destroy your roof over your head. But let me tell you that people are struggling financially. And the same people that, are, that used you for your money, the same people that try to rob you for a few dollars, they did something strange for a piece of change. They still coming up to you, asking you for help and they think that you're going to help them again. Fool me once, that's a shame on, shame on me. Fool me twice, I'll put the blame on you. Let me tell you something, man. Let me repeat that. I mean, fool me once, I'll put the blame on you. But if you fool me twice, you got to put the blame on me. So guess what? The second time they came around, let me tell you something. When your enemies are struggling, don't you get involved. When your enemies is going through hell, do not participate in that. Don't you dare try to pull him out of that storm. God told me to tell you to sit back, watch, and enjoy him fight for you. Sometimes we got to let these people go through what they go through so they can learn their lesson. But if you keep on trying to help people out of their storm, pull people out of their storm, guess what you are doing? You are defeating the whole purpose of God. And God told you to not go back seeking revenge for this specific reason, man. Because he wants them to feel the wrath. He wants your enemies to turn, turn, turn from their wicked ways. He wants your enemies to, to surrender unto God. This is why God told you, do not go back seek revenge. Trust me when I tell you, man. There is nothing like God's payback. The best revenge is, is success, baby. You keep on getting to this bag. You keep on getting to this paper. You keep on putting God first and watch God continue to elevate you all in the hate of face, man. Because they're suffering right now. I'm talking about, man, you got people arguing over you right now. You got people stressed out behind you. People can't even sleep at night because guess what? They are still, amen, uh, 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 reaping, amen, the consequences, amen, that they did to you. They are reaping, amen, amen, all the bad things that they did to you. I'm telling you, man, people can't even sleep at night. Trust me when I tell you, children, ones. So you have to realize, man, the more you take it to God and leave it there, the more God going to fight for you, man. We ain't got time to go back seeking revenge. We in our calling right now, children. Ones. We ain't got time to lower our frequency to stoop down to the enemy's level because guess what? We all the way up. 
Nothing should stop you from going up. Nothing should stop you from receiving the blessings of the Lord. Do not mess up your blessings because you want to go seek revenge on somebody else doing you wrong. Don't allow somebody else to change you, change the way you are, change the way you walk with Christ, change the way you talk, change the way you live your life because they did you wrong. They just showing their true colors to you. Somebody jealous of you, don't let their jealousy make you jealous. Don't let their hatred makes you become a hatred person. Let me tell you something, man. When people do you wrong, don't go back and do them wrong. Don't do other people wrong because somebody else do you wrong. You continue to love people. You continue to pray for people. You continue, amen, to uplift the bow down heads, man. You continue to be there for people, man. You be the light that is surrounded by darkness. Do not change because somebody else, amen, is doing you wrong. Don't do that. Because you're going to mess up your inheritance because somebody else's stupidity. You're going to mess up your blessings because somebody else's stupidity, man. Don't you ever forget that the wealth of the wicked is always laid up for the righteous, baby. You might think that these, your enemies got away clean with what they did to you. know they did not get away clean. It all is going to come back to them in a matter of a matter of a time. Well, I'm going to tell you that karma is coming back like a boomerang effect. Want me to tell you all them lies that they said about you, all those evil deeds that they did to you, all those wrongdoings that they did to you is going to come back like a boomerang effect. Trust me when I tell you there is absolutely nothing like God's payback. You got to realize that guess what? You belong to the Savior. You belong to the source. He's going to provide all of your needs. He's going to give it back to you double for your trouble. And you wonder why, guess what? The minute you walk back into your enemy's presence, guess what? They got this weird look on their face now. They looking crazy the minute you walk back into their presence. You can see the struggle in their eyes. You can see the tears that they've been crying. Let me tell you something. You know when somebody going through it. You know somebody, amen, who's suffering. You know somebody, amen, who's out here struggling because of what they did to you. You know it the minute you walk into their presence. And this is why people, amen, they call themselves hiding from you. They call themselves being embarrassed when they're in your presence because they know God is blessing you. They know God is keeping you. They know God is, is turning things around for your good. And this is why people don't, they don't want to say nothing when they come into your presence because guess what? They feel in the wrath of God. They struggling big time right now, baby. They suffering big time because let me tell you something, man. When you feel the wrath of God, I'm telling you, man, you be silent for a minute. When you feel that, that punishment from God, you're going to be quiet for a minute. Because let me tell you something, man. Well, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it hit harder than a baseball bat. God punishment hit harder, man, than a knockout punch. God wrath hit harder, amen, than the devil, amen, coming at, at you foul. Let me tell you something. God hit harder than the devil, man. All you got to do is sit back, watch, and enjoy God fight for you. All you got to sit back, amen, and just watch God, amen, perform, amen, his miracle for you. Perform that blessing that he's been holding for you. Perform that harvest that he's been, been holding for you. And you wonder why God told you, just wait, wait a minute. I know they did you wrong, but just wait. God said, guess what? I'm having you wait for a reason, man, because guess what? The blessing I'm getting ready to give to you is going to be big. That miracle that I have for you, just wait on that miracle, man. It's going to be big, man. Let me tell you something, Charles. Little do you know, I put my trust into some people's hands, man. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I thought these people was going to support me, help me get a place, help me get a roof over me and my kids' heads. Come to find out they used me for the money that I have given them. They stole from me. They told me they was going to do this and do that, and it hurted me because guess what? Now I got to go right back to my kids and tell him that daddy ain't going to get his place yet. Daddy got to wait. We're not going to be able to get the roof over our heads. Because guess what? Somebody done stole money from me. Somebody done lied to me and told me that that was going to help me get a place. And guess what? Instead of putting my trust into God's hands, I end up putting my trust into people's hands. Let me tell you something, man. 
People cannot do for you what God can do for you. You got to realize that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You got to realize that guess what? God owned a, a cattle on a thousand hills. You got to realize that God owned mansions on top of mansions. You got to realize that the heavens is, 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 is the Lord's. God owns the heavens. God owns this earth. And while you're trying to put trust into people, that's where we mess up. And you wonder why people always do us wrong. They backstab us. They betray us. They use us. They steal from us. It's simply because we put too much trust into people. Instead of taking all your trust and leaving it into God's hands. Instead of saying, Lord, I, I know that you're going to make a way for me. Lord, I'm just going to be patient and I'm going to allow you to perform that miracle for me. No, we want to put our trust into people's hands. And guess what we find out? People are two-faced. People out here that don't got no anointing, they're not out here getting to this paper. People out here, they're they not in their calling, they're they not in their purpose. Guess what? When they see you, they're going to do everything in their power to get your blessings from you. They ain't nothing but an opportunist. They ain't nothing but a robber. They ain't nothing but a thief. They ain't nothing but users, man. They ain't nothing but opportunists. Any little opportunity they can get to rob you out of some money, to rob you of your energy, to drain you of your energy, anything. They will do it. You got to be careful who you're giving money to. You got to be careful who you putting your trust in. You got to be careful, amen, who you putting all your faith in. Put your faith in God, man. People will get you when they out here making no money. They'll get you for a few dollars, man. When people ain't walking through big doors of opportunity, oh, man, they're going to be the opportunities in your life. I'm telling you what's going on. When people are not in their calling, I promise you, man, they're going to do anything in their power to steal from you, rob from you, lie on you. And you thinking these people, amen, by them not apologizing to you, you thinking that they got to wait clean. You waiting for people to apologize. You ain't got to wait for people to apologize to you. God will make people come up to you and apologize to you. Other something I'm getting ready to say. You ain't got to go back and, and seek revenge on people. You ain't got to go back and, and fight people. You ain't got to go back, amen, and destroy people's houses and, and, and bust people's windows out. You ain't got to go back doing that because you know why? Because God got the best revenge, baby. God is the one that's going to fight for you. God is the one that's going to rain karma on their head tenfold. Because God do not play about you, chosen ones. So when I'm going to tell you, all I'm doing is sitting back, I'm watching. And when I'm going to tell you, I'm enjoying God fighting for me right now. Let me tell you something, man. This summer, don't you fight nobody else's battles. As a matter of fact, this summer, you don't even got no battles to fight. Because God going to fight every battle for you. You stay in alignment with God. You stay in your purpose with God. You stay in your prayer closet. You stay reading the word of God. And he going to fight for you. You worried about a lawyer fighting for you? No, guess what? The lawyer wants some out of that. Think about it. You calling every lawyer in, 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 in the book. You calling every lawyer in the book. But let me tell you something. That lawyer, he wants some money. She wants some money for you. They can't fight for you like God fight for you. But when God fight for you, he don't want nothing back from you. All he wants you to do is keep on praising his name. All he wants you to do is never stop praying. All he wants you to do is never give up. All he wants you to do is keep on pressing towards the mark. God said, you ain't got nothing to worry about. All I need you to do is stay focused on drawing souls to me. You ain't got to worry about these people that did you wrong. All I need you to do is keep pressing towards the mark because your breakthrough is on the way. Your next blessing is on the way.
When God fight for you, he don't want nothing in return. When God fights for you, guess what? He ain't looking to take no money from you. He's fighting, fighting for you for a reason. He's fighting for you because he knows you got what it takes to make it to the next level. He's fighting for you because he already knows that he chose you for the mission. See, God knows that these people are going to do these things for you. He knows the enemy is going to be coming in like a flood. God already knows these things before it even happens. Because he chose you before the foundation of this world, man. God knows you the light that is surrounded by darkness. So this is why God said, you know what? You ain't got nothing to worry about. Because I'm going to send my angels to keep watch over you as you, as you sleep at night. I'm going to send my angels to protect your house. I'm going to send my angels to protect your car. I'm going to send my angels to protect your peace of mind. I'm going to send my angels to protect your life. My angels going to protect your destiny. You ain't got nothing to worry about because I'm going to send the angels to fight for you. And little do you know, chosen ones. When you crying out to God, little do you know, when you cry out to God, he hears your humble cry. That's why you never want to make a chosen one cry. Because when we cry, it's an automatic signal to the angels to instruct God to do whatever it is on our behalf. Why you think the, the word says to hear my prayer, O Lord? Hear my humble cry, O Lord. Incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. Why you think the Bible says that it's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding? So the minute you take it to the Lord in prayer, guess what he going to give you? He going to give you the peace of God. And people wonder why you didn't go back and seek revenge. The next time they come into your presence, they looking at you crazy. Like, why is brother so calm and cool and collective? Why he ain't come back and seek revenge? Why did he come back and try to fight me? Because it's the peace of God that, that surpasses understanding. God already gave me revelation about your, about your story. I already know you're struggling. Don't you be afraid to tell your enemies in the comment below and say, guess what, man? I already know you're struggling. Because God revealed it to me. People are looking at you, man. They shocked. People are looking at you, man. They're looking at your new aura. They see you out here winning. They shocked at the fact that you didn't go back seeking revenge. Because guess what? You already know they struggling. You already know they suffering. So why should we go back and to make matters worse on our hands? Because that's what you're doing. When you go back and seek revenge... You tell God to take every negative thought in your mind right now and to take it into captivity in the name of Jesus. You let that mind be in Christ Jesus, baby. You tell God, amen, to fill you up with his grace and his mercy. Fill you up with his peace because let me tell you something, man. God got you. He gonna fight for you. You sit back and you watch and you enjoy God fight for you. It's okay to sit back and watch. It's okay to enjoy and say, get him, God, get him, Jesus. Because you knew exactly what you was going to do if you would have left matters in your own hands. So guess what? You are rejoicing. It's not like you're making fun of these people. You are rejoicing because you you like, man, God, if I was the one that went back and seek revenge, I could have been in jail. I could have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave, and I would have went back and seek revenge. But let me tell you what God did. He made death behave, baby. God allowed you to sit back and he allowed you to still be alive. God is allowing you to sit back and he allowed you to get the victory. He allowed you to get that joy, unspeakable joy by watching your enemies suffering. And it's not the fact that you are talking about them. You're not laughing at them. Guess what you are doing? You are rejoicing with the Lord Jesus Christ. You are shouting in your living room because guess what? Your enemies are feeling the wrath of God because of what they did, did to you. God has really shown you that guess what? He really fought for you. And guess what? You didn't even have to move a muscle. You didn't even have to lift a finger. Not one cuss word had to come out of your mouth. 
And look at you now. You got your peace. You got your own roof over your head. You got your own car. You making your own money. You got your own business now. Because guess what? Your enemies was the one that promoted you. Little do you know. You need your enemies to promote you. You need your enemies to, to make you surrender to God and say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. So God can start opening up the windows of heaven and start blessing you. David need Goliath to promote him. Saul need David, amen, to promote him by chasing him down and hunting him down. And all David know who to run to was to, was to run to Jesus because he knew that Jesus was the only one that was going to fight for him. Jesus was the only one that was going to save him from Saul. So what I'm going to tell you, there is nothing like God's payback. You take that, amen, that revenge that you want to do to people, you take it to the Lord and you leave it there and you watch God fight for you. This is why when you see your enemies going through a struggle, when you see your enemies going through a hard time, don't you get involved. Don't you even try to pull them out they storm. You stay the hell out the way and let God finish doing what he's doing. Don't get involved because let me tell you something. You're going to cause problems on your own self. You're going to bring all that trouble to you. Let people fight what they got to, I mean, face what they got to face. Let people feel that wrath of God because guess what? They had it coming. Let people suffer. Sometimes you got to watch people struggle because guess what? They wanted to see you struggle. And you keep on getting to this money while they're struggling. You keep on getting to this paper while they're suffering. And what I'm going to tell you that God will fight for you. My question is, have you tried Jesus? Because he will fight for you. We the chosen.